Hey, my name is Isaac. Uh, I've been working all day. I'm a little dusty, but I wanted to talk to you about Osmo Pollux hard wax oil. Um, I just finished up this coffee table. It's sanded to 220 and I got my gloves on. Uh, I've got some Osmo. It's uh, a little bit purple looking almost kind of a creamy oil and wax mixture. Um, it's obviously not the jar it came in. I like to put things in smaller jars so there's not as much air in them. Um, but I've been using this finish quite a bit for all different sorts of things, but it's becoming one of my favorite oil and wax finishes. Um, I do use different types of like 2K polys and different types of film finishes that go on top of the wood and create a film on top of it. I like hard wax oils to give you that natural feel to go into the wood and actually kind of fill up the pores and fill up inside of the wood so things don't follow it in. Um, but you don't get a build on the outside and that can leave a really nice feel and look to the wood and you get the wonderful depth of oil with that color and the chatoyance really helps to come out of the woods, particularly on something like this, like Monkey Pod. Um, so the other thing I really like about this finish is I can be dusty at the end of my day in my shop and I don't have to vacuum the whole thing. I can make sure my piece is clean and then I can essentially just rub this in and at the end I'm going to completely remove everything. What stays in the piece is what's important and other than that I'm essentially buffing it completely off. So I really like that because I don't have to use a separate finishing building right now. My finishing room is, is full. Um, so I'm going to do this up and in 12 hours this is going to be dry. And I can do another coat in the morning essentially. And then boom, boom, two coats, maybe one more, three total coats for a tabletop is great. And that happens in, you know, day and a half. Um, so I really like that. So the first coat, it soaks up quite a lot. Uh, we are, we are this sort of a penetrating oil. It's going down in there and the wax stays on the top a little bit more. It gives you a nice waxed feel. Um, but I make sure I mix it up well. It does separate over time. The oils and waxes separate out kind of like oil and vinegar or something like that. You know, anything that separates out. Um, and in the beginning, I just pour a little bit on. I'm not pouring a lot on. I'd like to add more later if I need it. But I, it doesn't use all that much. The first one uses more. The second coat, barely anything goes in because you pretty much penetrated and dried in there. Um, one of the things I like to use is just a, a flexible, non-scratch kind of card. I get lots of these in the mail. This one's from my uh, mortgage company. It wants me to buy something. I'm not going to buy it. I'm just going to use it to like gently rub this in. Uh, white Brillo pads. 3M makes them. You can buy knockoff ones. They're the ones that don't scratch you don't get any scratching or marring really with these pads. They're the softest one. Uh, and they work pretty well for applying things. They're like a thin kind of spongy layer. They help carry the finish around and really rub it in. You're working this finish in a lot. Um, so I'm gonna distribute it a little bit and then I'm gonna really work it in and keep working on it. So boom, I'm gonna move this around and essentially just getting it out there, getting it around and Stuff floats a bit. Uh, I'm just floating this card around. I'm not trying to scrape it. This is just a distribution thing. Um, you can see the color comes out pretty quickly. You know, you immediately get that oil color, which is nice. And you get to see how far it goes. First time, start slow, add more. It's better to add more than to have a puddle of stuff because it's not super cheap. Um, it is a pretty expensive finish, but this is a pretty expensive table. So I want to do a nice finish for a nice piece of furniture and create something that's going to really last. So as I'm doing this, I can really see it soaking in. You know, I got little puddles some places, you know, it's pooling, but in other places I can see it, it just goes right in. Um, and the table, the wood is dry. It's thirsty. So I'm going to keep moving this around for a little while and just trying to hit all those spots, get good coverage. Um, if you get finished in one place and you leave it for a little bit, it's going to get dark there as the oil goes in and then you spread a new bit over it and you can see the place where that other finish was for a second, but it all evens out. I can 
at the end, I can't see any marks where like finish sat for a minute. Um, you know, I poured it on in the beginning. I can't see those marks at all at this point, and I certainly won't see them later. So it doesn't have any lasting marking um, from like uneven application. As long as you get, uh, you spend the time to really get finish everywhere, and we're gonna, you know, I spend a bunch of time with this finish, really making sure that it gets rubbed in and fully saturates um, the pores, and really, so I'm gonna be real thorough about getting all over the place. All right, so at this point, I pretty much covered all the basics, and I'm gonna switch to the pad. And, you know, you could start with the pad and slowly make your way across. That works just as well. There's no time thing on this. You can apply it and then wait 10 or 15, 20 minutes. It doesn't have to skim over that much. Essentially, you're looking for it to go in and sort of slow down on the, the rate at which it soaks up the finish. So now it's like you're trying to scrub a pan or something. You're rubbing it in there, really trying to get it in, work it in. Um, so just kind of, I like to do circular motions. As long as what you're using isn't scratching, you can use a cloth. You know, I'm going to take it off with just cotton t-shirt pieces, any kind of a cloth that'll absorb and won't leave bits of stuff everywhere. Um, as long as it's fairly clean, you can use shop towels, and for applying it, you know, you don't have to buy some fancy pad. You can, you know, use your t-shirt, whatever you got. It, you know, as long as it's not leaving some kind of contaminant there, like a paper towel, after, just a regular paper towel would probably suck. Uh, it would fall apart. So, uh, work it in everywhere. Make sure it gets in there real good. And, uh, it's pretty, pretty forgiving in lots of ways um, but if you get drips you and you miss them they'll dry and they, they get nasty and hard and hard to remove it's a little bit like a film finish in that anything that that is on the outside that dries hardens after 12 hours um, you know if you leave some boiled linseed oil out or something it's gonna maybe get gummy this stuff dries and hardens. So if you got some on the top, if you don't completely remove this, it's going to be a mess afterwards. You got to make sure you get it off. Um, that first coat, you might get lucky and, and have most of it soak in if you didn't go too heavy, but uh, you're going to, you're going to run into problems if you've got any of this finish left on the top and then it dries. Um, it, it does dry hard and you know, you can really see when you have your rags that you dry out afterwards, the ones that you're done with, that you wipe the finish off, they like conform to like, I drape them over the trash can and they, they become that shape, they dry hard. Um, so it's interesting to see, you know, it, it's actually doing its thing. I've had boiled linseed oil finishes that I swear after like seven days, they're not dry. Um, sometimes I, I question just straight oils, whether they're drying. All right, so this is looking pretty good, um, but I stick with this. This first coat is the most important coat, and it, it t pays to take some time and just keep finding those spots where things are drying out. Um, they continue to go in and just add a little more. Um, when these pads, they're a little spongy, and so you can kind of squeeze a little bit out on a spot that's really thirsty and, uh, and just kind of rub it in with your glove, you know, because your glove's not picking it back up. If I want some to stay in a spot, um, rather than pouring more out, I try to just kind of use up what's, what's already in this um, and uh, moving it around. So, and I want a real light gloss to stay on the top um, or most of it to, to go in. So I kind of just redistributing it, making sure I got my edges pretty well and uh, getting it all in there. Um, you can see I'm not wearing a mask. There's a little bit of highly refined mineral spirits in this, and then there are oils and waxes, and they're all listed in the ingredients. Um, this company is rated by in Germany for foods as a food safe, not food safe, but child's toy safe, so like kids could gnaw on it once it's dry. Um, so once the, the solvent has dried out of it in that 12 hours, it is safe for kids toys it's not rated in the united states no one's tested it and given it a rating because it doesn't come from the u.s it comes from germany 
but I uh, kind of trust them more maybe in terms of toxicity. Um, I'm not sure how much chemical companies are running things in Germany, but uh, maybe they are. Either way, it feels like a pretty safe finish. Um, this is what I have on my countertops in my house and they do really well with moisture. Moisture goes in and it comes right back out. And, uh, and they rate it for stains against soda and wine and all kinds of things. Um, the only thing that I've had mark this finish is rust. So something wet like a cast iron pan um, or we have canning jar lids all over the place and they get scuffed up and rusty. Uh, the moisture that goes in, if it has rust in it, like a rust stain on a regular piece of wood, you know, in a lumber yard with a nail in it or something, it gets that black color. Um, and so that's the only thing I've seen market. It's really easy to service and maintain. Um, you just hit it with a, if it gets scuffed, scraped, hit it with a little bit of sandpaper or even like a more aggressive Brillo pad, some steel wool, get that mark out and add more finish on. And within two weeks, it'll blend in completely. You won't be able to see where it happened and super easy for anybody to apply because you rub it in and you rub it off. It's, it's like two steps, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so at this point, I've got all the finish on. I'm happy with how it's penetrating. I'm gonna do two more coats. One more is, is you know definitely gonna want that second coat. Third coat is up to me. Um, and it is possible to wet sand. So you could put your second coat on and then with sandpaper kind of create a slurry and then gently scrape with a card or something like that that's not gonna mark but that's gonna pull the finish off the top and leave the finish in the pores. And then you would let that dry, right? And it sets up and then you sand it back a little bit. And then you add your third coat and you've essentially filled the pores, sanded it all smooth and then added more finish. Um, and so it, it is a finish that allows that. You can, you can fill the pores. So now I'm taking a couple rags and I'm removing all the finish. I really worked it in there good. I don't feel like it's soaking up a lot more finish at this point. Um, and so I'm just going for mostly gone. Um, and in the beginning, it's got a lot of friction, right? It's, it's kind of waxy and oily and sticky and there's a lot of tension. But once you get most of it off, it gets smooth because now you've got a waxed wood surface. The wax is staying on the top, the oil went down in. So it gets pretty smooth. So I kind of keep in a, an area that's waxy and moving well. And then I just slowly expand that perimeter um, so that I'm not like completely stuck all the time. Cause it can be a little bit of a workout doing this. Um, so I like to keep things moving. Sometimes I run two towels and uh, just keep working, expanding my nicely buffed area. Get buff. Um, and then I'm gonna come back after and I'm gonna go with another towel that is completely clean after I think I've got everything off and I'm gonna do it all again. Just, you know, super polished, like I'm polishing a brass object or something. I don't know, polishing silver. I just wanna make sure it's buffed out. Um, because I don't want to find that there's a gummy spot later. Last thing I want is for one spot on this table to be a mess and just sticky and tacky and weird or have like brown dried surface finish on it when the rest of it doesn't. Um, I want it to be consistent and nice and even. So uh, I took all this time to get it to this point and make sure I do a good job all the way through. All right, so that's feeling pretty good. Make sure I've been thorough. Always look for drips because it's a bummer when you find a big chunk on the bottom. All right, that's pretty good. These towels are a mess. Um, and they're a potential hazard for spontaneous combustion, anything so soaked in any kind of oil. So make sure that you dry them out or you properly dispose of them. Some people put them in a can of water. Um, or something where they could not heat up, smolder, and catch on fire. Um, so I just drape them on my trash can. Clothesline, anything, and they're gonna dry out nice and hard. All right, so now I got another clean t-shirt and just the super polish. There should be nothing left on top of this table. Oh, it feels so good. 
This is the kind of finish that it's just like so waxy and smooth and nice afterwards. You kind of just want to like lay on it. It's real good. Um, and I love the color with all the, uh, the oil. Just gives it that great color. It's hard to achieve with a water bearing finish or a lot of other finishes. Um, so I'm always really happy about the color. But uh, it's a pretty great finish. I, I dig it and uh, I've had it on my countertops or on my sink in my kitchen for a couple of years and it's doing really well. I'm getting ready to reapply a little bit more. It is an oil finish. It does have a service interval. You do have to maintain it or with some kind of uh, an oiled furniture maintenance product, whether it's like some kind of Howard, you know, furniture oil or whatever. But um, it really does last a long time and it's got a much longer service interval than just a simple oil finish and it doesn't leave cup rings or anything, which I like. But uh, let's take a look. So you can see there's a good shine. But it's it's really polished. There's uh, there's no finish on the top there, and yeah, we got some good curl in this. And there's an inlay. I really try to get everything back off of uh, of that. But anyways, if you have any questions about Osmo, I'd love to try and help. It's been a bit of a journey figuring out all the finishes, and uh, still trying to figure them out. But uh, try to share some of my experiences along the way because I'm always out there looking for more information, figuring out what kind of experiences people have, are having. And uh, this is a finish that I've, I've started to like. It's just like any finish. It's not for everything. Um, you have to pick the right finish for the right application. But uh, hopefully you give it a try. I'm certainly not sponsored by anybody. This is just one that uh, it's been working for me and I uh, hope you have good results.